Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity 1. I'm your host, College Fade. It's episode 3. There are butterflies. We are here in the Veilwood. I'm gonna try to make our way through here without getting into too much trouble since we're by ourselves. Camping supplies. You already have the maximum quantity camping supplies. Really? Okay. Well. In that case, we will move onward. I think if we follow the road, we might run into something kind of interesting, but maybe not. Oh, someone just ran off in that direction. Ooh. Uh-oh, there's a body over there. That doesn't look good. Can we move over there? Are we going to get in trouble going in this direction? Oh yeah, we are. Young wolf. I don't like this. Oh my goodness. What Ready happened? to sleep like the dead. Yeah, no kidding. Well then, maybe we will want to go back and get those camping supplies after we use some. It's, oh, we rested. Apparently, we got some hit points back. Okay. That's cool. Oh, but he's tired. What's this? Minus accuracy. Oh, I see. Well, I got an idea. Let's go back up here. We will camp and grab these camping supplies. So I can do damage reduction. Yeah, that's what I can do for my survival abilities. Okay. We'll rest. And we get the first of these dream sequence things going on. Eight hours have passed. We'll grab that. What else is up here? Nothing. Okay. What's my buff here? Damage reduction plus one damage reduction. Okay. That's cool. Uh-oh, I got a person here. Hmm. Let's blind them. Now, hopefully our job gets easier. I strike crits outlaw. Ooh, days for 19 seconds and blinded. <gasps> That was nice. That's why you like to have that starting. Man. There's a helmet. What do we have here? A sword? I don't think I can carry everything else she's got there. Maybe I can. There's a dead guy over there. How do you suppose we get in there? I got something over here. What is this? A young wolf? Oh boy. A young wolf. So what is this? Creates a toxic physical manifestation between the cipher and the enemy target. Enemy's caught in the middle. All right, let's do this. That's awesome. I love that. Oh, go, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, I'm done. Oh. Okay, there are wolves down here, and it's not possible to beat right. them by myself. So, it took several attempts for me to get it through my thick head that I needed to continue on. So, this will get me down the road. Tell you what, what's going on over here? Is there a little camp over here? Greetings. The man appears to be hurriedly dismantling his camp in a quick jerky movements. He looks up as you approach, his expression tense and drawn. Greetings, he says. 
On your way south, is it? Have to say, don't see too many of Mau out this way. You headed to Defiance Bay? Lots of work on the harbor, I hear. He wipes his brow, turning to face you. The sooner you're clear of these woods, the better, I think. Our caravan was attacked. I've been trying to get to Gilded Vale. Hard luck, and I'm sorry to hear it. You should be fine from here. There's no missing the veil if you keep to the road, and you haven't far to walk. But you'll want to keep clear of this place after that. We were just attacked north of here. Me and a friend of mine, we came out here to hunt some deer. Came upon a bear instead. Great monstrous thing. And pearly. He didn't make it. I don't know what I'll tell his wife. In any case, this forest already cost me a friend. I'm heading home before it takes anything else. Who are you? Name's Naughton. Born and raised in Gilded Vale. Haven't had a spot of luck since. Luckier than Pearly, I suppose. Hmm. Where did you find this bear? In a cave. A ways up that way. He turns to point to the northwest. I wouldn't seek it out if I were you. It was a great brute of a beast. Would hate to hear that it took another life. So, we'll go this way to Gilded Vale where we can get some friends. And then we'll come back and do this map. Alright, how do I get the heck out of here? And, oh, I see. The, it, ro it moves around. Okay. Well then, let's go, Gilded Vale. The Gilded Vale. Let's see what kind of... Oh, we can get into here. That is a tree full of dead folk. You must be one of the new settlers. Welcome to Gilded Vale. You'll be pleased to know that we've had some recent vacancies here i'd say a man approaches you his skin as dull and gray as the desolate village behind him <laughs> are you mad no wonder this place looks half empty the only answer you hear is the buzzing of flies from the tree of course we'll need to make some inquiries first the inestimable Lord Radric VII has taken great pains to insulate our town from Widewind's legacy. Have you ever sired a hollow-born child? What are you talking about? An infant born without a soul, of course. Lord Radric has made it his first priority to eliminate this scourge from our village. I should warn you, stranger. Here in Gilded Vale, we have a special place for dissidents, charlatans, and those who would hide a curse in our midst. His lordship's wife is with child and due any day now. Without his approval, I shan't be able to find you a permanent settlement. It will have to wait until after the birth. We can continue our interview then, after the bell tolls from Radric's hold to signal my lord's new heir. In the meantime, you can find temporary accommodations at the inn just southwest of here. You said something about Hollowborn and Widewind's legacy. He blinks. I forget that you foreigners do not have this curse in your homelands. The Hollowborn has been a scourge upon the Deerwood for almost 15 years now. He lowers his voice to a whisper. Children born without souls. Pitiful, dumb things that breathe, barely, but do not truly live. Some say the Hollowborn are a disease. Some say they are a punishment from the gods. He raises his empty hands. In truth, no one knows. But they began spreading after the Saints War, and so the name Widewind's legacy stuck in honor of that foul blasphemous pretender. Lord Radric's decrees may seem strict at times, but he has our best interests at heart. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's important that everyone in Gilded Vale understand our rules. Before I got here, I saw several people conducting a strange ceremony near some ruins. He regards you carefully. 
You'll want to mind where you mention that. Trespassing on Inguithin ruins is illegal, not to mention dangerous. You probably saw someone attempting some new ritual to appease the gods. People will try anything these days. Bereth, have mercy. We certainly have. I don't think so. Just as they finished, there was a bee whack. He polishes his spectacles on his sleeve. If you'd been that close to a bee whack, you wouldn't be standing here. I've been feeling strange ever since a close call with that bee whack. Is there someone in town who can help? Whatever your problem, it sounds like a matter for an animancer. However, the only animancer in Gilded Vale isn't in any condition to speak. Consider yourself fortunate. After she failed Lord Radric, we saw to it that she wouldn't profit from the misplaced trust of others. A bad cure is often worse than none at all. But if you're set on finding a bottle of troll piss or a dead Audra pebble to rub on your forehead, you're welcome to check her pockets. A little corpse stink is nothing when you're digging for shit. My advice, however, is to be satisfied that you escaped and leave it at that. Keep out of... Listen! Two tolls. Let that be the last. Three. Gods have mercy. It seems your arrival is ill-timed. <laughs> Three bells toll only for the death of a Radric. I fear Lord Radric's heir is lost, or else Hollowborn, and so lost all the same. You should tread carefully. Circumstances have changed a great deal. And does this affect the Lord's offer to new settlers? I can be sure of nothing right now. I advise you to get some rest. The inn, or a stable, for all I care. Find me afterwards. I will know more soon enough. Hmm. Alright. Well then, it's time to assemble some friends. It's also time to look for this person here. Got mushrooms. Settler's arrow. Oh, it wants us to go all the way around. We can't hop over this little rock here. There's, there he is. There's our man. We'll talk to him in a minute. Okay. Scattered between the roots are bracelets of twine and bead, wilting flowers, and notes half erased by the rains. I thought there was someone here that I could interact with on the vine, but maybe not. Although I have a recollection of that, I'm pretty sure it's alright. Let's talk to Adair first. Were you looking for someone in that tree? Uh, I could introduce you. <laughs> uh, strange way to talk about your dead. Half the town's up there now, seems like. No right way to talk about it. I'm looking for someone who can make me feel better. <laughs> My condolences. He exhales and turns his attention away, watching the village around him. Well then, okay, he's not going to talk to me yet, what about this, villagers, okay, let's go, maybe we have to go to the, Thiel, who's Thiel, what's he up to? As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. Voices from his past seem to call you out. You see a pennant waving tall and sluggish in the wind, a rising sun embroidered on the banner, the vanguard of a small troop of paladins. The atmosphere is buoyant, restrained, and their armor has not yet been tarnished by the elements. This expedition is fresh, young, filled with zest and zeal. At their head stands a commander, awkward in full armor, but determined in step. Despite the excitement of his fellows, he does not smile. There's a twist to his mouth, 
his countenance grim. He throws up a hand, halting his troop. Silence falls among them, revealing a dark thunder, deep and low. He orders them to ready their weapons and spread out. Eyes dart from horizon to horizon, necks twisting to see the source of the sound. In the distance, dust and lightning rise from the ground as Stygian clouds race toward them overhead. The soldiers stand, only the staccato movement of their breath betraying their nerves. The commander closes his eyes, calling a blessing down on his troop. Invigorated, invincible, they wait as the enemy draws closer, poised to attack. Seems that you can see into the souls of people and see their prior souls. The game has a really neat lore history of what that has to do with souls. It's very, very cool. The Black Hammer Smithery. It is very interesting. It took me a while to get into the game because of that, because me being a atheist and non-religion person, and in fact, a person who really chafes at religion, who doesn't believe in the concept of a soul, it really took a while for the game's lore to stick with me in a way that was positive. But it is very cool to think about the idea of souls being a real thing and then what happens when babies are born without them? And what happens if somebody returns to the wheel and is born again? Reincarnation is a big thing in this game. And he can see into the prior souls of these people. Or not, their prior souls. It's one soul, but their prior lives. This is a very cool concept, actually. Commoner, this person, what about Prentice? Don't tell Tuantanu, but I think Dunstan over in First Fires might have the edge on him. <laughs> okay. As you near, you feel a vibrant history contained in the essence of this man's soul. You see a man crouching, surreptitious and alone, a series of untamed shrubs all that hides him from the vision ahead. His eyes are locked on a delum gun, a beautiful and terrible eyes half-lidded as she hums. A bird with fantastic blue and orange plumage sits on her shoulder, trilling gently, and the man is entranced. Trembling, tentative, he stands, and the tranquility is broken by the bird's startled squawk. The delum gun half smiles, beckoning with twig-like fingers. She does not speak as she approaches. His mouth is dripping sounds of awe and admiration. She waits, coy and tempting, and with agonizing slowness, he is before her. Then something changes. She sees something hanging limply from his side and begins to hiss, fingers suddenly claws and eyes black with hate. He has no time to reach for his axe or grimoire as she strikes. And just as soon as she strikes, she is gone. The only evidence of her existence, the shuddering wreck on the ground. He grabs at his grimoire nevertheless and begins to chant. But the words, words of a magical language of his own imagining, scribbled in a maniacal shorthand, ring hollow. And the silence continues unabated. He turns and shrugs at someone or something. But if there is something there, you do not see it. This Amawa man is of an impressive build towering above the countertop. His skin is the dusky blue of the deeper oceans and his thick arms boast corded muscle. Small ears frame a square jaw, face coated in smeared soot and arcing black tattoos alike. He offers you a broad smile as you approach. Welcome. You're the first new face I've seen in quite some time. What can I do for you? Ah, well, is this your shop? That it is. Been here near on twenty years now. Seen all manner of things over the years. Good luck and bad. But the black hammer smithy remains. What do you have here? You come to us at a strange time, I'm afraid. Stock's not what it used to be. But we find weapons and armor to offer yet. All forged right here at the black hammer. What happened? We just don't have the supplies. 
Been expecting the next delivery for near on a week now, and haven't seen a sign of it. Have to expect they were hit by bandits. The road out east is crawling with them. Or my workers ran off with the wagon themselves, maybe, to make some coin. As if that lot would dare. If you happen to be headed that way, maybe you could keep an eye out for a supply wagon. Or my shipment, at least. They'd be cutting through the black meadow, I expect. Only good road for it. As it is, most of our weapons go to his grace, Lord Roderick. He glances at the nearby guard. And that's as it should be. But as it doesn't leave much for outsiders, we just don't have the iron. I'll find your supplies. Then you have my thanks. You bring those supplies back, and I'll have plenty more to offer you. A discount to start. And if you find my workers, tell them to hurry up, or they can take up farming instead. Well, I do Good want day, to see stranger. your wares. I want to sell some stuff. Let's sell all this junk. The helmets don't really do anything. They're just for show. So. We will sell that stuff. And wool fights. Wait a minute. Do we need these for crafting? I wonder. I'm going to hang on to that for now. Sell the rest of it. He's got a stiletto that's really expensive. And Jenna's lance. What is that? No, no. Go back. This is a pike two-handed with reach. Oh, nice. 20% of grazes converted to hits. I like the way it does grazes and hits and crits. It's very cool. All right, so we got his shipment that we need to go find. Let's go see if we can find the rest of our parte. So where is Ayla? Where am I at? Right here. I think. Aloth's right there. Okay. And then what's up here? The windmill. Let's go down here. I think we have to rest at the inn and then some more things happen. Maybe. My memory is there. Here we go. You see four people gathered by the door to the inn. Their raised voices and chopping gestures suggest an argument reached its climax. The first figure raises his hands for calm. His face is partially obscured by a hood, but his height and stature suggest an elf. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over a round, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. <laughs> well, what's going on? One of the other men points at the hooded elf. His eyes are red from drink, but his gaze is focused. Mocking us even while he shelters in our village. Just goes to show you what these fancy Adira manners are worth. We don't take to that kind of treatment. Not from foreigners, especially not from Adirans. Go on, say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you cocksfeather! That's a pretty good one. I'll cut that barrel looking tongue out of your head. This is a misunderstanding. I didn't say whatever it is you think I said. <laughs> We've nigh quarrel. That's where you're wrong. No. <sighs> Oh. <laughs> this is unnecessary. Wouldn't you rather be inside drinking than out here arguing? We don't want your charity either, foreigner. Sounds suspiciously like you're defending him. Well, I am. So, let's see what we want to do here. Let's whisper angry town person here. <laughs> Then I will take this person. Oh, smashing. As the last of the attackers falls, the elf turns to you, the tension almost gone from his smooth face. Not quite how I hope to get to know the neighbors. Thank you for your timely assistance with that awkward situation. 
You're welcome. Courtesy is a rare pleasure in these parts. Though your accent suggests that you are no more local than I. He straightens his hood, and you note the remains of fraying embroidery on his gloves. His boots are caked with the dirt of many months' travel, but the leatherwork beneath is sturdy and fine. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvuser, at your service. Mm. Tell me about yourself. Well, I'm a wizard by training, and an adventurer by necessity. I was born in the Seathwood, part of the mainland of the Adir Empire, and both of my parents served the nobility, which afforded me an education for which I am grateful. However, there were no open positions in those houses, and so I decided to seek new means in a new land. And how exactly did you come to be here? I was traveling with a caravan, but we were separated near some ruins. In Gwythan ruins? Well, those can be dangerous places during the best of times, which these are not. And half the locals would arrest you for trespassing, and the rest would kill you outright. I'm curious. What exactly did you find there? Several hooded figures operating a strange machine. Aloth goggles at you silently, apparently assessing your earnestness. Finally, he gives you a clipped, awkward laugh. You do manage to find yourself in rather interesting predicaments. <laughs> Just how did you manage to cross those three drunks? I'm afraid that was a matter of misunderstandings and mistranslations. It doesn't help that people in these parts remember their war with Adir like it was yesterday. You did tell that one man to go fuck his sister. Ah, that. He clears his throat and adjusts his sleeves. As I tried to tell them, they misheard me. Happens all too easily after a few pints, and the accent doesn't help. I heard the same thing. For just a moment, he looks as if he's about to say something else. His expression brightens with mischief, but before he can speak, he forces a tight smile, biting his lips so hard you expect to see blood. Finally, his face relaxes, and he shakes his head. I should speak more clearly next time. My apologies. What are you doing in Guild Vale? An excellent question. I came looking for fresh air and cheap land. Instead, the magistrate gave me directions to the inn and a story about the local lord's expectant wife. But I take it that's a familiar tale. Yeah, I've been experiencing strange things of late. I'm looking for an expert on souls. Indeed. The local lord has searched far and wide for similar specialists. He has rid himself of them almost as desperately. His darting glance takes in the tumble-down buildings in the fallow, rock-strewn fields. I expect that such expertise would be best sought elsewhere. Yeah, well, you don't exactly look like a settler yourself. Begging your pardon, but neither do you. Yet, circumstances can find a person in the strangest of places. I should get going. As should I, given recent events. It's just as well. I've had enough of the watered wine and lumpy beds at the inn. They say even the owner tired of the place. Just up and left one day. It explains quite a lot about the upkeep. Perhaps I could join you. I could use a change of scenery, and I find it's better to travel in numbers. Mm. So do I. Let's go, then. Excellent. I shall follow you. So we have Aloth with us. We need to get Adair, but I think we need to rest at the inn first. And this is also going to be where we're going to pick up the first mercenary that we're going to take. Let's see if we can How rest do you do? Greetings and welcome to the Black Hound Inn. Please sit where you like. Would you like a drink? A room? We have two available at the moment. I'm afraid we can't offer much by the way of a good meal today, unless you're fond of cold porridge. A room, then. Of course, we keep them nice and tidy. The common room can be done for zero. Rest in the common room for zero copper. Sure. Your sleep is restless and fevered, assaulted by hisses and whispers. Blanketed with a suffocating anxiety, you open your eyes to awaken and find yourself in front of Gilded Vale's gallows trees, the creaking of its ropes growing louder in your mind until the sound is deafening. 
Hanging from the tree is an old dwarf woman whose face has shriveled inward like moldering fruit. Her head hangs limply to one side. As you look at her, she looms larger and larger in your mind until she is mere inches from your face. Suddenly, her head snaps up and her eyes open, and they are empty, and behind them is a vast nothingness that makes your stomach drop. Her mouth slowly parts, and with a gust of rancid air, she speaks a word. Watcher. You jolt awake, the foul smell of the dwarf woman's breath still permeating your nostrils. Sweat runs down your face and thick droplets in your skin is soaked from head to toe. You remember the woman. You remember seeing her decaying face when you spoke with the magistrate. He called her an animancer. Though it fills you with a new, queasy apprehension, you feel a strange compulsion to see this woman once more, if only to confirm she is truly dead. That makes sense. Let's go see the woman then. We will head this way. Over here. An animancer. We are going to get a talk to her and then Adair. And I think what I'm going to do is save that for the next episode. So folks, the end of episode three, we're in Gilded Vale. The game is underway. I love it. Thanks, everybody, who's going to follow along on this journey and for watching the episodes. I will see you next time. As usual, if you dig it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave your questions and comments down below. Until the next episode, happy gaming, everyone.